The Eldritch Hack, Rules Like Cthulhu RPG, featuring the scenario Cloak House, is available for download at Drive Through RPG. You've been warned. Dungeon Craft viewer Rafaria writes, Professor Dungeon Master, how would you instill the concept of fear and terror on player characters? This is a challenging question, especially because the author didn't specify a game system. It's far easier to create fear in, say, Call of Cthulhu than Dungeons and Dragons because they have mechanics that support it. D&D is superhero fantasy. Fear comes from the feeling that your character might die. D&D mechanics make that difficult with lots of hit points, healing, magic, short rests, long rests, death saves. All of this makes your D&D character feel all but invincible. But I have experience with a lot of other game systems, so I think... I can provide an answer to this question. Let's explore today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing. This is a video about how to cause fear really in any game, but I'm going to be referring to different specific games and their mechanics. So we will be touching on Dungeons and Dragons and Call of Cthulhu. I want to make it clear, I think there's nothing wrong with causing your players to feel fear as long as it's a consensual relationship and it's part of your social contract. When I play a game of Call of Cthulhu, which I did recently, I want to feel a little bit of fear. It's catharsis. It's the same reason we go to see a movie. If I'm paying to see a movie like Halloween or Insidious or Hereditary, I'm, I want to be a little scared and I want to walk out of that film and feel like, I'm glad that wasn't real. That feeling of catharsis is why we enjoy horror stories. And if I'm going to run a horror story or a tension-filled story, I will tell that to my players in advance. I'm also going to be very mindful if my players have any traumatic experiences, like from real life. I'm not going to exploit them. If I know one of my players, for example, was bitten by a dog when she was a child, I'm not going to have her character pursued by a pack of pit bulls. You don't want to traumatize your players. That's part of the social contract. But as long as they know that you're running a horror scenario and they're cool with being scared, then I think it's perfectly okay. The first scenario I can remember playing and feeling fear was Shadows Over Bogenhofen, which is for the Warhammer Fantasy game. This is back in the late 80s. I had only played D&D up until this point. And in this scenario, we're looking for a missing person. The trail leads to a sewer. And in the sewer, we find this, this underground demonic temple. And we're poking around and all of a sudden a demon materializes and it looks like the big horned guy from legend and it says leave this place at which point i promptly left there is a mechanic for feeling fear in warhammer but i didn't need to wait for that i was just boom i'm out of there my experience up until that point had only been D and and you don't in in encounter demons and devils till you're like 15th level so this is a brand new character i was actually terrified i remember it really creeped me out and the scenario does a great job of building on that initial fear to create a feeling a tone of paranoia it's kind of got a rosemary's baby kind of vibe where you're afraid everyone is out to get you and everyone might be in on the conspiracy because no one really believes that there are demons in the sewers cubicle seven just re-released this scenario in a director's cut you can find it up there and down in the link below and i highly recommend it but i had a great time and the other players had a great time we enjoyed feeling that fear and that led us to call of cthulhu which i was the keeper for for a number of years call of cthulhu has a mechanic called insanity which is meant to replicate the trope of lovecraft stories where the narrator is very unreliable and tends to go insane and have to be placed in a sanitarium by the end of the scenario either that or they kill themselves so in the call of cthulhu game characters start with about 55 to 60 sanity points and when they encounter a creature a deep one a zombie whatever they lose a certain amount of sanity and if you lose five points of sanity in one shot you have to make essentially a saving throw or go temporarily insane you run off screaming into the night or crawl up into the fetal position and start sucking your thumb either way you're out of that encounter and i always found the problem with this mechanic is that I often leave the monsters off screen until the very end to reveal them. And once they're revealed, the players fail that role. And if they just run away, well, 
they're just missing the conclusion of the scenario. And I notice when I play in other people's Call of Cthulhu games, other keepers almost universally also ditch or nerf or modify this rule. I tend not to like mechanics that say, if you fail this die roll, your character must act in this way. It takes away autonomy from the player, and although it works perfectly fine in a Lovecraft story, a role-playing game is participatory and you don't want to miss the ending of the game. That's why my rules light horror game, the Eldritch Hack, does away with that mechanic altogether. Eldritch Hack is pretty much compatible with Call of Cthulhu scenarios, but I eliminate the concept of temporary insanity. You still have a, a sanity threshold where if you hit zero, they're going to have to put you away for the rest of your life, but until that point, the player can just act out how they feel like their character would act in the game. There's a scenario that comes with the Call of Cthulhu game. I think it's called, it used to be called The Haunted House. I think it's been updated to be called The Haunting. And the players explore this haunted house. And in the cellar is this uh, like lich type creature. And I remember my friend Jean is, is playing an investigator. And the other investigator is, is played by my wife. She's playing his fiance. And he uncovers this thing from the wall and it mind blasts him or grabs him or something like that. And he goes down and I ask her what she's doing and she says, I'm running. And I said, but he's your fiance, aren't you going to save him? And she said, no, I have a 15 appearance. I'll find a new fiance. That's the way I prefer to play this scenario instead of her, okay, you went temporarily insane and you, and you run away. That's taking away her autonomy. Here, in this case, she chose to run away, which means even though she missed the end, well, that's the end that she created for herself. A similar mechanic in 5e, a dragon's frightful presence. The players have to make a saving throw. It's a wisdom, I think 19, or you get disadvantage to all attacks. And again, I'm not really crazy about that rule because it's not saying the player, the player is not scared. It's saying, okay, if you fail this one role, your character is so scared, they're bungling with their weapons. And it takes away player autonomy. A better rule is the old school vampire rules. Old school vampires drain two levels, automatically no saving throw from anyone they touch. And this makes vampires really scary. Once the players find out that they're in a vampire's castle, if they've ever encountered them before, they're like, whoa, vampires, they drain levels. Let's just back up here. I know there are players that really don't like that rule because they don't like the idea that their characters could lose levels permanently, but I really like it. It makes them afraid of vampires, which is the whole purpose of the rule. Then again, this doesn't take away player autonomy. They can fight the vampire if they want to, but instead, the player is afraid, so they choose not to engage with the vampire. Or if they do, they try to take the vampire by surprise, which is what Van Helsing does in all those Hammer Horror films. Like, they're always trying to sneak up on the vampire during the daytime when it's in its coffin. That's the trope the old school games are trying to replicate with that level drain. I think it's a missed opportunity that the new Ravenloft didn't have a rule like when the characters pass through the mists of Ravenloft, their armor and weapons don't go with them and there are no death saves in this new land. That would actually make the players feel afraid. Like I always found that weird. Like there are these evil mists that allow the players to walk through with their best weapons and a plus five Holy Avenger. What's the deal with that? Another simple way to cause fear is just to roll your dice out in public. I recently created a villain called the Ginormous and he has multiple attacks and if he gets a natural 20, he chops off your head. Doesn't matter what level you are, you don't get a saving throw, you're just dead. And I would tell the players this at the beginning of the encounter. I would say, all right, metagaming break. If this thing hits you with a natural 20, your head is chopped off, you are dead forever, no saving throw. So just so we're clear, that's what happens on a natural 20. And you're gonna watch all your badass 5e players go, whoa, because they know the Game Master is not pulling punches. And the other thing you can do is just the opposite. When the players ask, what do I need to make that roll? You say, anything but a one. Like if there's a narrow stone bridge across an active volcano that's erupting, say if you fall off this bridge, just so we're clear, it's going to be 0 0.09 seconds before you hit that lava, and that's not enough time to cast any spells. So if you fail with a natural one, you are completely incinerated and you don't get any kind of saving throws. You are just dead. That is enough to instill fear in them, even though the chance of them rolling a one is very slim. 
And that's how I make my players feel fear. But if you have other suggestions, drop them in the comments below. Also below, you'll find links to Dungeon Craft on Facebook, on Patreon, on Drive-Thru RPG, where you can get a PDF of my horror game Eldritch Hack, which comes with a scenario cloakhouse, and you can get my 5e compatible Deathbringer rules as well. This is Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. May all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. My only fear is this guy will die of old age before he gets to 100,000 subs. So click the subscribe button and get my t-shirt below and watch more Dungeon Craft.